RCTP, beginner to 512, level 2, 510A to 510C, part 3. 510B to 510C. Technique 1, down climb a route. Down climbing a route is a great technique to learn. It helps you out with many, many things. Um, but most importantly, it helps to prepare you for lead. So here Renee is climbing up, and I'm going to switch to belaying her when she starts to down climb. Now, when you first do this and you're learning how to belay like this, make sure to ask somebody in your local gym or just another climber who does know how to um, belay somebody when they're down climbing. And, you know, make sure that you're doing this safely because you don't want to drop that person, you don't want to injure that person. So Renee is now down climbing this route and um, it's a little different because you're forced to really lead with your legs and now um, you're flipping up your whole scenario so you're actually thinking okay where do my hands need to be before I can reach my legs and as they go down the second thing that you're practicing is that there's no longer really tension in your rope whenever you're top roping and going up a route you kind of have a little bit of tension that helps to pull you up the wall when you're down climbing your rope needs to be a lot looser and has a lot more slack and so going down a route you now need to get used to you know what does that feel like when you don't have any tension and that is also a mental exercise so it's no longer just a physical exercise there's this mental exercise of okay no tension and what do I do? Two, learn how to commit to moves. So committing, here goes Brian one. Oh, he didn't make it, but you know what? He says, screw it, I'm committing. Boom, made the hit. You gotta commit, guys. You just gotta make it. Just go for it. Go, hit. Awesome, good job, Brian. Three, switch feet. As you start to enter into the 510C and 510D range, the footholds are gonna become a lot smaller, where you used to be able to match your feet on some footholds, now you're no longer going to be able to do that. So what you're going to have to start to learn how to do is to switch your feet. And here's what this looks like. So I have a small foot chip right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put one foot on it. I'm going to work my way over. And then I'm going to just hover this foot above, switch my toe over, and then keep going. Let's watch how many times Fab switches his feet on this route. One foot switch, two foot switch, three foot switch, four foot switch, five foot switch, Six foot switch. And done. Four. Mantle. If you've climbed outdoors, you're going to know what it feels like to mantle. There's a lot of natural spaces like this where you have to get over a lip and you need to mantle by putting your palm down on the ground and pressing up. This is why I suggested to you guys to practice dips at this range for cross training because the movement that you're kind of mimicking is like doing either a chair dip or weighted dips inside of a gym. Let's look at movement of a mantle. So here Renee is going to get her feet up and get into position and then she's going to have to flip her hand around and start to mantle. So here's her first mantle where she's pushing up pretty hard and then she's going to have to also rotate her right hand and also mantle again to get her foot, her second foot up. Five, palming. Palming a hold is a version of a mantle. As I move up the wall, I'm gonna slowly rotate my wrist onto this hold and I'm going to push down and this will help me get into a position that I can move up and grab another hold. Here is a video of me palming in the gym. So that large hold that my currently my right hand is on, I put my left hand on it and you're just gonna watch me slowly rotate my left hand into a palming position to get up this route. And finally, take a lead course. At the 510B to C level, now is the time that you take your first lead course. If you're going to be climbing outside, you're going to want to ask a few specific questions of your instructor. 
So the first one is going to be, how do you set up a top rope for somebody else? It might look something like this. Okay, you might not like it that way. You might wanna change this draw around. Now, another thing that you might do it's a different top rope style. It's a little bit more, well, it's definitely a lot more safe and a little bit, just a little bit more indestructible is to set up something like this. If you notice these two are locking, whereas these draws were not locking. So I can put this in and lock it on root. This now is self equalizing so it can move around. It also won't uh, fall off because it's through three, not four. And if you go to clip in, after I've clipped this, I also can lock these two carabiners. And now I have four locked draws, which is a lot safer. The other thing that you're going to want to ask is, how do you now get this down off of the wall? Say everybody's done climbing, what do you need to do to clean a root? That's what it's called, cleaning a root. And learning how to clean a root safely is one of the most important skills in rock climbing because this is where people injure themselves the most is actually taking all the gear off the wall and coming down off the wall.